There's a big change coming to Google's Core Web Vitals metrics, which will affect your website's SEO if you're not prepared for it. Google has now introduced Interactions Next Paint, which will be replacing First Input Delay in March 2024. So why the change? Google felt that first input delay didn't accurately represent how pages responded when users interacted with them. Rick Viscomi, DevRel engineer at Google, had this to say about the outgoing metric. FID only reports the responsiveness of the first time a user interacts with the page. Even though first impressions are important, the first interaction is not necessarily representative of all interactions throughout the life of a page. Further, FID only measures the input delay portion of the first interaction which is the amount of time the browser had to wait due to mainframe busyness before even beginning to handle the interaction. With that being said, how is IMP different from FID? Specifically, IMP measures overall how much time elapses between a user interaction like a click or key press and the next pane, whereas FID measures how long it takes to start processing an interaction. The goal for this metric is to keep the time for when a user interacts to when the next visual pane is presented as short as possible for most, if not all, interactions that occur on a page. Google says that 90% of user time on a web page is spent after the initial load, so it makes sense that FID was an outdated metric and should be replaced with a more advanced metric such as IMP that assesses the overall responsiveness of user interactions rather than just the first one. Now that we understand the concept of IMP and Google's reasoning for introducing it, let's take a closer look at how it's measured. We can break it down into three components. First, there's input delay, which is waiting for background tasks on the page that prevent the event handler from running. Then there's processing time, which is running event handlers in JavaScript. And finally, presentation delay, handling other queued up interactions, recalculating the page layout and painting page content. To understand more about how interactions are measured and their component breakdown, we put together an experiments page with different typical examples. Only the following interactions count for IMP, clicking with a mouse, tapping on a device with a touch screen, and pressing a key on either a physical or on-screen keyboard. Scrolling through a page would not count as an interaction. It's important to note that if a user does not interact with a page, then IMP cannot be measured. IMP is all about responsiveness and providing a good user experience for visitors. The value looks at the slowest interaction on a page. Here is a breakdown of the IMP thresholds. An IMP below or at 200 milliseconds means that the page is good responsiveness. Above 200 milliseconds and below or at 500 milliseconds means that the page's responsiveness needs improvement. And anything above 500 milliseconds means that the page has poor responsiveness. Responsiveness is more important than ever and a good IMP score could potentially improve bounce rates and get you more traffic from Google. Overall, you're providing your visitors with a faster experience and improving SEO. Now that we understand IMP and the scores that we need to achieve, we can begin to look at data to improve it. A great tool to use is the Debug Bear SiteSpeed Chrome extension. This will allow you to quickly get an IMP score with any website once you interact with the page. If you're looking to get familiar with IMP quickly, this could be a useful habit when browsing the web. Since Google is looking at overall user interaction, then field data will be key in optimizing IMP. Debug Bear's real user monitoring go a step further and collect real user analytics for all of your visitors to look at individual page views and the IMP score for that particular visit. Wondering what the average IMP is across your whole site, the percentile trends will show the entire range from best to worst. In this example, we can see that only 3.4% of our visitors experience bad IMP. To understand what page interactions we need to optimize, we need to find out which page elements are most often responsible for slow IMP. Clicking the bar will apply the filter so we can take a look. Once you have found the elements that need improving, then you can begin to make some changes. Trying to identify pages that have poor IMP, use the table view to quickly identify where improvements can be made. In this table, we can see our second most viewed page is performing worse in comparison to the other pages. Matching up page views with IMP scores allows us to make better decisions on whether we should prioritize optimizing them or not. Clicking on the row will apply the filter so that we can look at the elements on that particular page. The load stage breakdown overview shows at which point the IMP interaction occurred. This helps you determine whether interaction delays are caused by the app and third party scripts during the initial load of the page or background tasks and event processing later on. In this example, we can see the loading stage has a much higher IMP meaning that the initial loading process is causing the poor IMP rather than the interactions. However, if we hover over the bar, we can see that it only represents 20 views. We can also see IMP scores, component breakdown, and element for individual page visits. If the experimental long animation frames API is enabled on your website, then this data can also be displayed on run page views. 
The API provides insight on delayed frames and what scripts on the page are responsible for the delay. CPU tasks on the browser main thread can delay rendering, resulting in long animation frames. This information can help you debug IMP. You can learn more about this API in our blog post. IMP can also be found in Google Search Console along with the other core web vitals. IMP tends to be harder to improve than other page speed metrics as it requires a page interaction to be measured and optimizing it often involves debugging complex JavaScript logic. The DevTools Performance Profiler is a great tool to find out what's happening on the page main thread and how you can optimize it. Before recording, open capture settings and enable CPU throttling. This will better replicate a less powerful device visiting your website. Then click record and interact with the page. After interacting with the page, stop profiling and head to the interaction lane to find any interactions that took place. Hovering over the interaction will show the breakdown. The red striped area shows when the interaction duration exceeds 200 milliseconds. Before the interaction is a whisker to represent the input delay and after there is a whisker to represent the presentation delay. This breakdown of the interaction is only available in newer versions of Chrome. The browser main thread is responsible for rendering content on the page and handling interactions. If the main thread is already busy when the interaction occurs, then there will be input delay as the event is queued until the main thread becomes available again. In this example, we can see that the main thread is busy even before the user interaction, and this leads to input delay. The multiple time of fired events show that the browser is running tasks that have been scheduled by the page. If a user interaction happens while this background task is in progress, then the browser first has to finish the schedule task before handling the input event. In this case, the processing time accounts for the vast majority of the IMP value. If we click at the task at the top of the main thread lane, we can see a summary view at the bottom of the screen. Here we can see that the task duration is mostly due to JavaScript processing. Switching to the bottom up view shows us how much time is spent on individual JavaScript functions or tasks like compiling JavaScript code. Here we can see that the function that the browser is spending the most time on is the write cookie function. We can search the main thread lane for the write cookie function. This shows us that it's not a single long call, but rather the page is calling this function 24 times in different places. The prepare and write cookies function could likely be consolidated and only called once. We also see that a lot of time is spent as part of the new utag trigger handler function. This suggests that a lot of this code is not core application code necessary to update the UI, but rather tracking code. For example, calling the Google tag with window.gtag. Since these tasks are not necessary to display new page content, they could be deferred until later when the UI is finished updating. If we look at what's going on in the main thread during the presentation delay time, we can see various rendering related tasks like prepaint, paint, layerize, and commit. However, they don't take an unreasonable amount of time and the browser rendering tasks are often difficult to optimize. IMP is still in beta testing and won't fully be introduced till March 2024. Though keep in mind that Crux data is aggregated over 28 days, so data from February will count towards your core web vitals. As a new metric, Google is iterating a lot on how IMP is measured as it's being introduced as a core web vital. To stay on top of any updates, you can view the IMP change log from Google. Another resource for learning about IMP is the debug bear documentation, which goes into great detail about some of the intricacies of the new metric. For data on how users are interacting with your website, then sign up for a debug bear account. Debug bear makes optimizing your website easy with over 70 metrics tracked and features including catching regressions quickly with alerts, real user monitoring, providing data on individual visits to your website, experiments to preview optimization changes, automated recommendations, and much more. Sign up for the free Debug Bear 14-day trial and start monitoring your website today.